Uh, if we could turn to some questions, I think first, Laura Koonsberg from the BBC. Um, thank you, Chancellor. People are, of course, devastated by the numbers of people losing their lives. But tonight, with warnings of two million extra people unemployed, people are also desperately worried about their jobs. If you can level with people, do you think we will be feeling the costs of this crisis for a generation? Look, I, I also, when I see these numbers, um, deeply troubled. And as I've, I think, consistently said when I've been at this podium and elsewhere, you know, this is going to be hard. It, you know, our economy is going to take a significant hit. And as I've said before, that's not an abstract thing. People are going to feel that in, in their jobs and in their household incomes. So, you know, yes, it will be difficult in the short term. I'm happy to be honest about that with people. I think the measures we've put in place will help. And then as we get through this, it will mean that we can you know, recover quickly and strongly uh, and get our lives and economy back to normal. Can we turn next to Ed Conway from Sky? Uh, yeah, thanks, Chancellor. Um, there's been quite a lot of talk uh, about how unprecedented the economic impact of uh, COVID-19 has been. But the scenario that we've heard about from the OBR, as you say, uh, it is pretty shocking. You know, it's the deepest slump since uh, 1709, 2 million people unemployed, the state at its biggest size ever, the national debt at 100% of GDP. Did, did all of that shock you? And... Even if the economy does bounce back, you know, we'll still have higher debt. It will be a bigger state. So are you really suggesting that life will simply return to normal? Well, Ed, what, you know, I'd echo what I've said before, and you've given some, some numbers there. But I, I, I generally don't believe this is a time for ideology or orthodoxy. You know, this is an unprecedented time, it's an unprecedented crisis, and that calls for an unprecedented economic response. So in that sense, you know, it's not surprising uh, to see some of these figures, because what we're dealing with here is unlike anything we've seen before, which is why we've put in place the measures we have. Uh, and I do believe that those measures it will help mitigate some of the short-term impact on our economy. I think we had one follow-up that I may have missed, so apologies. Okay. Emilio, hi. Obviously, one thing that could make the economic situ situation worse is a no-deal Brexit. So why is the government willing to put the country through that on top of what is currently already going to be suffering through coronavirus? I Thanks, Emilia. I, I mean, you talk about no deal. I mean, the reality is we've, we've left the European Union and we've left it with a deal that was uh, negotiated. You know, with regard to our future relationship, uh, obviously that's something that currently those talks are under underway. We remain very committed to the timeline that we've set out uh, to conclude those by the end of this year. Uh, what I can say is, you know, David Frost, our chief EU negotiator on behalf of the Prime Minister, uh, was in touch with his deputy counterpart last week and with Michel Barnier, his direct counterpart this week, uh, to make sure that we have a timeline in place for this phase of the negotiations, which obviously can happen uh, over video conferences and texts and legal agreements are being exchanged uh, between uh, the EU and ourselves. So I'm, you know, I'm confident that that work uh, can continue and, and hopefully reach a, a satisfactory conclusion, but we remain committed to the uh, timeline that we've set out.